We have called together the Sunday Roundtable, and joining us this week is Boston Globe columnist Adrian Walker and Republican political analyst Rob Gray. Great to see you guys. Happy Sunday. So, Adrian, I want to start yes. with you. Jeff Deal, he's been unhappy with media coverage of his campaign and sort of the controversies that are surrounding the state GOP. You heard what he just said. You've been pretty tough on him in your column. What's your response to everything that he said this morning? I would not say that I've been tough. I would say that, I would say that I've been accurate. And uh, the Mass GOP is in a terrible state. I mean, it just is. You know, you've got this faction that has pushed it far to the right in a state that's anything but. They talk about building the grassroots and winning low bug low ballot races. I mean, where is it? The vice chair had to resign last week because of a Facebook scandal, because of thousands of inappropriate messages he sent women. What does he expect people to write about the mass GOP right now? Um, he did not step away from Jim Lyons. He did not step away from Donald Trump. Were you surprised at all, Rob? I'm not surprised. I mean, that's potentially for deal where the votes are with the, with the Trump wing of the mass GOP. His run is based on a big bet that Charlie Baker won't run, and he'll actually face off against Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, who he thinks he can beat in the primary. If Baker does run, uh, then I would not be surprised if Deal drops down to that LG race in primaries Polito and in the Lieutenant Governor's race. Do you think that might be a factor that plays into uh, Charlie Baker's thinking about running for a third term or not? Well, sure, there's lots of moving parts playing into the governor's thinking. I, I imagine that has to be one of them, although I don't think they're too concerned about Jeff Deal. Let, let's talk about the governor's profile right now. He, he's back on the, on the fundraising trail. Uh, so is there, is there more confidence among Republicans that he is running for a third term? Rob, let me start with you. Uh, there's a lot of hope and I think a little confidence creeping in that, that he might just do it that there's a lot more work to do. Charlie Baker thinks he should finish the job, that COVID really delayed uh -huh. uh, what he wanted to accomplish in, in his second term. Uh, and let's face it, I mean, he's somebody who can win. If you want to have Republican governors for 28 of the last 36 years, which is amazing in a Democratic state, the GOP needs Charlie Baker to be leading that ticket. Adrian, you know, you remember the old saying, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Is, does the governor look like he is a candidate for governor right now? Uh, the governor looks to me like somebody who's sitting on the fence, actually. But I'll say two things. One, it is hard to walk away when you think you can win. And I'm sure he thinks he can win. And the other thing is the lack of an heir apparent is a real problem. I mean, nobody thinks Karen Polito, I'm sorry, but with all due respect, nobody thinks Karen Polito can win a governor's race. So speaking of COVID, um, uh COVID cases right now uh, have been brought on by the Delta variant. Governor Baker isn't making any changes to the state's current pandemic policies. That includes not expanding a mask mandate as kids head back to school in just a few weeks. Boston Mayor Kim Janey is making masks a requirement in city schools. Who's got it right, Baker or Janey, Rob? I think Baker has it 100% right. I think kids have spent too long in masks. Let's face it, these schools have made improvements in air exchange. Uh, we know that the fall is going to be warm. You can open the windows. You can have tents and outside classrooms. All the stuff that wasn't done a year ago to the detriment of, of school children across the state. Those in the archdiocese went to school full time, no problem, starting in September. Public schools didn't follow along. What Charlie Baker could do, I think, to, to improve things more is to mandate vaccination for health care workers and for those kids who are, are going to go to school that are of age to be vaccinated, that would be the best thing. Mandate for teachers too? Sure, mandate for teachers, absolutely. I mean, it, we, we've reached a, a certain level of vaccination that we can't get over. We need some, some government mandates now to get to herd immunity. Is Rob right about this, Adrian? No, I think Janie's policy is much closer to what we need to do than Baker's policy. I mean, you see all the numbers are going up and they're continuing to go up. And Baker, as he has been throughout this pandemic, is, in my view, overly cautious. I think there should be a mass mandate in schools. I agree that there should be a vaccination mandate for teachers as well. Well, let, let's talk about the, the Boston mayor's race. And he says, Savi, George and Andrea Campbell are more interested, apparently, at least in, in, in what it appears, in dislodging the acting mayor, Kim Janney, from her perch at the top of the mayoral polls rather than going after Michelle Wu. So, Adrian, let, let me start with you. If, if that's the correct assessment, what is the strategy here? Well, I think for Campbell in particular, I mean, the issue is that she and Janey are fighting over so many of the same voters. She kind of has to go after Janey to get herself out of fourth place. Rob, what do you think? Well, here's the thing. Janie has sort of seeped in as the mayor over time, just like Tom Menino did before. So she is really the leading candidate. I don't care what the polls say. I think Janie's the leading candidate. Um, the, the danger with them going after 
Janie, is that Wu sort of shoots the gap, right? That there's a, a negative shootout mm -hmm. between the Campbell camp and the Janie camp, and then Wu is sort of left out of the fray and, and is the de default next choice. Um, let's move to D.C. Tom Brady returned to the White House last week with the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Bucks and cracked jokes about the election. Take a listen. But we found our rhythm. We got on a roll. Not a lot of people, uh, you know, think that we could have won. And um, in fact, I think about 40 percent of the people still don't think we won. <laughs> I understand that. You understand that, Mr. President? <laughs> I understand that. That was Joe Biden <laughs> Ch chiming in there. Uh, Brady has also hinted that he may be interested in politics after football and a chance for a different kind of return to Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. So what do you think are his prospects, Adrian? Uh, his prospects running in Florida might be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you could see him running for I, U.S. Senator I, I or something like that. I could see Tom Brady as a senator What do you think, Rob? Well, Adrian hits on it. Like, what is his home state? Is it Florida? Is it California? California. Is it Massachusetts? Massachusetts is it right. Michigan? Right. Uh, who knows? I mean, I think as long as Gronk's not his running mate, <laughs> he probably has a good chance. <laughs> Great point. Why, why should he limit it to the U.S. Senate? Brady's got president written all over. I mean, he's still in his prime. He he's might be old for football, but he's young for politics, years. right? He's young for Look politics.